Right guys, bit of a seed saving day today. Peas galore. I think I saved every type of pea that I was growing this year. So put those out of the way for a minute and do the broad beans first. These are um, Gloucester Bounty. They were quite nice actually. These are Greek Gigantes. I'll put those to one side for now. These are my own giant runners. I've got more of those to do, so I'll put those to one side. Uh, yeah, I'll tip them out and use that as a rubbish. Yeah. Let's get them out of the way. Yeah, how some... I was going to go up the plot, but... Well, I went up the plot, sorry. I was going to spend some time at the plot, but it's, it's just not pleasant up there at the moment. It's just, you, you sink underfoot. Yeah, good start, look. Hole in that one. Now, in the past, I've planted ones with holes in, and they've been all right. I'll show you this one in a minute. But, um, if I've got enough, I shan't bother saving those, you know what I mean? And then, what are we doing? That one there, that one there. Right, let's get a production line going. These um, uh, Gloucester Bounty. Yeah, these um, Gloucester Bounty were from the Heritage Seed Library. They were quite, uh, they were tasty, didn't when they show, didn't when the Bartley show? Because they're not, um, oh, I don't know, even enough for exhibition, you know. Fussy so and so, but let's put that there. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'm just going to pop them all in and inspect them later. Yuck. Somebody's got a bit of mould. Oh, a slug trail that is. Not mould at all. Right, back in a bit. Well, I've got a fair few decent beans. Oh, there's one there, I missed that one. Put that one with those there. Um, now, here's one for you then. Let's get me camera, let's get me phone on, hang on. Right, here we are. Now, I mentioned about ones with holes in. Look at that lot there, and some of them got two or three holes in. Now I remember um, I did a video. I think it was last year, or year before. I had success planting ones with holes in, but not when they're near the um, what you call it, the embryo. I mean, most of the pot, most of the seed is um, a food source, isn't it, for the emerging seedling? But this is where. The genetic material is at the front so i probably won't keep those but here's what to look for in the pods look there's that telltale holes i'll pod these ones on camera so we can see where, where the holes are right yeah let's, like i said let's do these there's the hole there so that one there should have a hole in it yeah there it is and that one's all right sometimes i've noticed i've been done a few of these look there's a hole but the sneaky little bugger has crept along and popped into a different bean. <laughs> There's the hole there, so you'd think it'd be in this bean here. And there it is. And it's uh, luckily it's at the opposite end, so we'll keep that one. Isn't it weird though? I mean, this is what I was going to say. Now, these are uh, heritage variety. Now, heritage, don't get heritage mixed up with heirloom, because heritage means... It's an oldie worldy one, it's died out and people are trying to bring it back for some reason. Heirloom is the new word for open pollinated. Anyway, heritage, right. So you've got to ask yourself, why is it heritage? You know, why did it die out in the first place? Where's the hole there? Could it be that the Gloucester bounty sort of died out? Here we are, hole there. Um, yeah, not sure about that one. Um, could it be it died out because they're susceptible to... Whatever beetle it is, pea beetle, broad bean beetle, whatever it is, you know, could be, couldn't it? Because my other Bunyard's exhibitions, which I didn't save seeds, but I um, I shelled and peeled a lot, you know, for uh, for freezing, and I don't remember seeing any holes like this in them. And they were, I don't know, two beds away, yeah, two beds away. 
God crikey, that one there's got more blooming hole than bean, that one. Isn't it weird, eh? And that's two, another one there, look, so the sneaky little so-and-so's had a double whammy at that one. Yeah, so, um, I was hoping, I might just still do it, see, I'll count up for us how many seeds I got to send these out and sort of spread the, uh, the heritage. But, like I said, if they're, if they're susceptible, that's, yeah, that is weird. I have never seen so many like that, put it that way. So they're going in the bin, I'm not saving those at all, those ones. I'll, what I'll do, I'll inspect them all properly. Let's get all this done now before the weather turns. I can do this indoors, can't I? But, um, yeah, it's a weird one. Gloucester bounty, well, you know. Gloucester. Mm. Right, yeah, what's next? Better label, no, I to label those. I ain't got any more broad beans, are I? I ain't got the rubbish pile. Oh, I tell you what, no, I'm not, I'm not in the waste space. I was going to say I could do a trial and plant one of those. Or plant all three, couldn't I? Yes, I will. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do it in a pot. Well, I'm going to put those in a bag, label them. Um, yeah, whole. Gloucester about me with a hole by the percent, by the... Uh, I just started spitting a great amount with these. Um, HG, her screen shaft, HG. Just had a quick look at um, the old Google on internet, uh, bean weevil. Now, strangely, one site says the beans are totally unusable for growing. And, uh, well, I have grown them in the past, so I'm not sure of that. Um, and the Royal RHS website says it only affects dried beans. But the other websites say the, the weevils live in the field and they lay their eggs in the broad beans when they're growing. So, I've given up looking really, I've got holes in them. It doesn't matter now, does it? <laughs> right, that Hurst Green Shaft, let's get on with these. Lovely. These are good on a show bench, these are. That's why I've saved these. Look, manky seed there. So the sort of thing you want to do with a bit of music on, isn't it? Well, if I did that, I'd get a copyright strike by YouTube. <laughs> uh, things I do for you people, forego my music. My um, favourite music is reggae. Especially well, the stuff that was made popular by the uh, Trojan label in the UK, but I just love the the authentic Caribbean type one, you know, the original 1960s type reggae. Dead raw, you know, chinga, skenga, skenga, that sort of thing. To me, it's something you can associate with the artists on stage. You know, I, see, I saw a few while I was out there actually, that was in the, um, in the 80s. I saw a few concerts, usually on a I don't know, a dirt or gravel car park somewhere with a scaffolding stage with some planks on it and a couple of big old martial amps, you know, brilliant. A couple of bottles of Red Stripe, Appleton Rum or um, Mount Gay Rum, they're my two favourites. Did um quite a few rum tours, I might have told you this before actually, rum distillery tours, interesting stuff apart from the fact you get loads of samples. <laughs> uh, we did, um, I may have told you this before, but we did a tour of the Mount Gay factory um, distillery. Uh, cut a long story short, at the end we got our free samples, me and me and uh, Pepe Le Pew, another chief, we, um, we outlasted everybody else and there's just the two of us left and another tour came round. Because we got friendly with, now I can't remember his name behind the bar, I'm sure it was something like Marcus. I've got some photographs, I think, I've, I've, I'm sure I've told you this before. But um, um, he gave us some of their samples. Then that tour went, another tour came round and we did three or four tours in the end. And uh, on the last one I was given the talk behind the bar on how to drink it, look at the colour and the clarity and that. <laughs> so funny. Right, that's those done. I'm going to leave that bunch till last, because a lot of them... Oh no! Slugs eating my blooming label! 
and this one that's just started to go look oh no so that's either Felton first or oh jeez oh. well they're Deuce Provence I grew five lots I didn't save snow peas so they're either Felton first or right then <laughs> Detective Steve has had a quick look and I know what they are. I know what they are. I think these are all the same. Yes. I didn't save any Kelvin and Wonder, that's what it was. So these, these Douche Provence, first green shaft. And it, Kelvin and Wonder are short, so there's no Kelvin and Wonder. What I'm going to do in... I'm going to... Oh, jeez. They look the same, though. I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the colours inside. Well, they're green. And they're greenish. Yeah, they're the same because some of them are in like a, a, a brown colour, aren't they? Yeah. This is why you should always write on the blooming containers, isn't it? They are Sprinter, I know they are. Yep. And I'm thinking. The reason they're in different punnets is because these are the ones I picked first for the show and these are the ones I harvested for eating. Or saving and eating. Right, let's get on with it. Back in a bit, guys. <laughs> and what I'll do, see that one I didn't mark. What I'll do on that, I'll put Sprinter. Here we are, look. Nice lot of Sprinter von Marbach peas. Yeah, I think they are all the same type. The ones that are a little bit swollen, like a little bit square, that's because they got a bit damp. But they're alright, they dry out again. Quick experiment. was a bit quicker. Well, that was worth sorting that last little bit out because that wood, that there, is about as many seeds as I planted last year to get all them. Well, there we are, guys. Quite a few douche Provence. They're a lovely pea. I think they're probably, yeah, I think they're probably the tastiest ones of the ones I've grown. Um, then 
the sprinters, the sprinter on Marbat and then the Hearst Green Shaft. They're all nice when they're fresh and young, though, aren't they? These are these are the earliest ones. These, all this was in the veggie pod. All these, plus the ones I've eaten, are from um, 32 plants. 32 plants, and that is not counting the ones I ate and the ones I've the ones I froze. <laughs> right, it is raining now, so indoors. Oh yeah. 